Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. That's right. It is time. NFL Big Game Previews. This is Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. This is that sweet music. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. All right. We had a big NFL week one, but that just leaves us thirsty for more. So we're going to get into NFL big game previews for week two. We're going to talk about the five biggest games of the weekend, and we're going to discuss some more interesting matchups after that. Smaller ones, but still interesting nonetheless. The show brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com or... You can just go down into the description there, whether you're listening on podcast or watching on YouTube, etc. Click on the link down there. It'll tell you all you need to know about the sports books and everything else that's happening down in Tunica, Mississippi, down in the great delta of Mississippi. Ah, We can be found at winningcureseverything.com. If you have not already, go sign up for the Pick'em Contest. This week, again, we've got a Tunica prize pack. Last week had a guy that went 10-0. In the Pick'em Contest, we had over 170 entrants. Uh, I'm telling you, people are getting smart with these lines. You got to be good if you're going to jump into this thing. It is free to jump in. All you got to do, put in your email, put in your name, make your picks. You can win a prize pack as well. It's a couple of t-shirts, a golf marker set, tickets to the Gateway to the Blues Museum, all sorts of stuff. A, a koozies. I mean, they got two uh, tunica koozies. I mean, it, it's awesome stuff. Pretty good prize pack, if you ask me. So go sign up for the Pick'em Contest. You can find our picks. You can find everything else about us, our social media, everything else over at winningcureseverything.com. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button for us. Leave some comments. Tell us what we got right, what we got wrong. All those wonderful things. If you're listening on the podcast, if you're on Apple, hit that subscribe button. Leave a nice review. Five stars, written. If you're on Spotify, if you're on Google Podcast, whatever your favorite podcast app is, if they let you leave a review, leave a review. Put five stars. Tell everybody you know about it. Share the show out. Let's get jumping. You ready to fire in? Come on. Everything's going well? Yep. All right. All right. I'm ready for this. NFL Big Game Previews Week 2, Game Number 1, the New Orleans Saints. Traveling across country, short week. To the Los Angeles Rams. The Rams are a three-point favorite. The total is 53. It is a 3.25 p.m. game on Fox. That is the prime window on Sunday. It's at Memorial Coliseum in L.A. Rematch of last year's NFC Championship game. Went to overtime last year. The Rams got the win. They are headed to the Super Bowl. Were headed to the Super Bowl. Uh, Both teams started out 1-0. This could be an NFC playoff preview. Tell me what you think here. Sean Payton getting done? Is, yeah, is this big, a revenge big, spot? Big revenge spot. Um, I, I, I have no idea, actually. I'm really excited to watch this game. The Saints give up big plays. Drew Brees still got it, but, I, you know. It's it's weird, right? Against, it's, against the team, the caliber of the Rams, this is not going to be easy. T.J. Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast joined us on the Gambling Picks show, and he brought up that the Saints gave up a lot of big plays against the Texans. The Rams are kind of known for big plays. Yeah, I mean, that's what Sean McVay does. Here's the deal, though. It doesn't I mean, both of these coaches are going to be ready. Um, I'm God, I'm crazy excited about this game. I'm really shocked. The over-under in this game is 53. Yeah. I like the over because I think both of these teams are just going to sling it out. See, I like that in the playoff game. You remember I took the over yeah. on that and it ended up, what was it, a, a 44 is the, what was the? the I have, I'm not going to get, I don't I have no idea. I don't remember but, what the playoff, total was. Playoff but, football is completely different than regular season football. Totally yeah. different. And here's the other thing. I'm looking at Vegas Insider. 99% of the people are on the under. That's that's 9-9. Yeah, and 83% on the Saints on the spread. 
People love this revenge spot here. Well, and I also think people love the Saints. I, I think, mean, they, I they think do. They have a massive following. Been around for a long time. That's. I'm. I'm wondering people how love much. New Orleans. I wonder how much of the the Texans game, where you know they did give up the big plays. That I'm. I'm wondering how much of that was looking ahead because they want to get back at the Rams. I don't know. No, I don't think that. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't think know that the NFL matters. really does that so much. Yeah. But here's the other thing. Carolina went toe to toe with the Rams. Yeah. I mean they lost they lost by a field goal. The Rams went across country. Yeah. But I mean Carolina hung with them. If if we think the Saints are considerably better than their counterparts in the South, which I don't know that I do, but but I do think they are better. I don't know. It's it's gonna be interesting. We uh I'm curious to see the home field advantage that the Rams have. Because L.A. just has not shown up. No, the I, first I agree. First year with you. that both those teams were there, and and the Ram, they're showing up more for the Rams than anybody. But still, it, it's still not the same as it is like going to the Superdome. No, not at all. They they don't they don't have just the crazy home field advantage. No, I I do and, agree and with so you. So I wonder I wonder how much that's going to come into effect, and and I'm really curious. I mean, have we ever seen a Super Bowl team? Not have like a crazy home opener, uh, and maybe it will. Maybe the LA guys will come out of the woodworks, and and maybe they'll be jumping and rocking and and ready to celebrate their team and start a new season and and make another run at this thing. Maybe. I don't. I don't think so, but but we'll see. I mean, there's there's nothing else going on in LA, right? <laughs> there's there's kind of always something else going on, which is why. It, Let's uh, let's make some picks on this real quick. I've, I'm going to take the Saints on this one. Uh, I like them to cover. I like them to win. Um, are you it, just this is for you know our little big game podcast? I, I, pod, would, uh, I would take game the, I'd take the Saints. Rolling with the Saints. I'd take the Saints. Saints and uh, uh, to win and cover, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. That sounds like a plan to me. Game number two. Minnesota Vikings at the Green Bay Packers. The Packers are a three-point favorite. The total is 44. It is a noon game on Fox. Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin. The Vikings defense shut out the Falcons for three quarters last week. Picked off Matt Ryan twice. Matt Ryan had two 12-yard scrambles. Ish Smith had a 16-yard run. Take away those three plays. The D-line held the Falcons to 2.7 yards per carry. Uh, no, the Falcons are not known as a running team, but neither are the Packers. Oh, but you yeah. got to have some semblance of a running game in order to get your passing game going. Uh, on the other side, is the Packers' defense really that good? I mean, they they absolutely stacked the box against the Bears and forced Trubisky to throw. The Bears averaged 3.1 yards per run on only 15 carries. Um I, I don't know what to think here, really. I, well, I think I we're like going to get the, the same style of defense from the Packers. Yeah. I think they're going to stack the box, and they're going to make Kirk beat them. And I think that Kirk Cousins can do it. Yeah, I do, too. I, I do especially I like with, with the offensive staff that they've got. You, I mean, you, you and I you are and high I, on the Vikings. I was going to say, you and I are a lot higher than almost everybody else that I read and follow. Yeah, on the Vikings. Yes. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the Vikings to win this game. Yeah, me too. This is this is my this is gonna be in my gambling picks, but absolutely. Yeah, it, same here actually. Yeah. So if Vikings plus three and to win for both of us. Let's move on next game. Game number three: the Seattle Seahawks travel across the country to the Steelers. Steelers are a four point favorite. The total is forty six and a half. Game time twelve p.m. Another Fox game. Kind of surprising, right? It's a, the the NFL does this TV switch yeah. up thing so differently because Steelers in the AFC that should be a CBS game, but whatever. Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The Seahawks beat the Bengals twenty one to twenty in Seattle last week. The Steelers got blown out thirty three to three in Foxborough. Um, Steelers. It, I wonder how much of this was they were going up against the Patriots on the night that they get to celebrate the Super Bowl victory. I mean, it's a Sunday night, primetime spot. Nobody beats the Patriots in Foxborough. You know that as well as anybody. That was just not a game that they were going to win. But but were they really as bad 
as what they looked like. They, I mean, they look like they had no heart. That's the problem. It's one thing to go up there and lose. It's another thing to just not to show up demolished. at all. Yeah. I mean, to get embarrassed. You, they didn't put up any fight at all. Yeah. I mean, it was it was bad. They didn't score. They, this great offense, this big bid for, for MVP or whatever. And, and you know, nothing. Blanked him. Yeah. Kept him out of the end zone. They 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 looked about as bad as you can possibly. Now I look. think they're going to score this week. I don't. I, you know. I, I think if Cincinnati can score on Seattle, I definitely think the Steelers are going to score on Seattle. Um, I I have no clue, no clue what to think here. If I got to make a pick, I'm just going to take points. That's that all I sense. know to do, because I have no earthly idea what to expect from Seattle, and and I saw one week of of the Steelers. And all I can think is they're just not good. Um, are you rolling Seahawks to win the game? If I have to make a pick, yes. Okay. But I, I don't. You don't trust them. I don't want to make that pick because I honestly have no earthly idea. Yeah. I'm just taking points because this, I, this I get will to start be with a head. I get to start with a head start. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I, it, this will be an interesting game to to figure out what exactly are these teams. Yeah, I right? think I'll know a lot more about both of them after this game than I know today. Because the the Seahawks, like one, were the Bengals actually pretty good, or was Seattle not as good as we thought they could be? Or I mean, there's there's all sorts of different storylines that could go in here. Um, look, we all understand Russell Wilson, great quarterback, but with Brian Schottenheimer calling that offense. He puts them in some of the worst positions, man. It is. It didn't it, look it, good. It is borderline criminal what he does with the talent that is on that team. It's just ridiculous. And if he does it again this week, I mean, one, you, you don't want the Steelers, if, if you are the Steelers, you don't want to get into an 0 2 hole. No. I mean, it, you, you know what the, the percentage is for teams that go 0 2 as far as making the playoff, right? Correct. So you don't want to get in that spot. Um, I'm going to roll Steelers minus four. Here, I, I think they bounce back. I think they were absolutely embarrassed last week. And I think this team does have more heart. They do have talent. They've got a good defense. Uh, I think they find a way to get it done. And I think that they cover the four. I think it helps that they're playing 12 p.m. against a West Coast team. I, I think that's, that helps. that's probably the biggest indicator. Yeah. Uh, game number four. The Browns at the Jets, Monday night football. Typically, this would not be a big game. Nope. Right? But both of these teams, 0-1, the Jets plus three right now. Line opened up at the Browns minus one and a half. It is all the way up to three now. And the total is 45. It's Monday night, Monday night football, 7.15 p.m. ESPN from MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Sam Darnold had a, a 16 to nothing lead on the Bills at home. Had. Had. And lost 17 to 16. And man, I just, this Browns team, for all the hype, for all the, the, the talk, and to put up that performance at home in week one was just ridiculous. So you will find out this week if the Browns have any heart, if they are going to, I mean, if you get out to an 0 2 start, this team could absolutely implode. They because this schedule gets tough. You and I talked about this on the the recap, the reaction show. Man, can you imagine what it is going to be like in Cleveland if this team starts out zero and two? Because yeah. they could easily start out one and six. Yeah, it's going to be tough. I mean, even if they win this, they could still go two and five to start. But man, you if you're the Browns, you've got to get this win. Yep. And and I mean, what do we know about the Jets that? would make you think that they could win this game? I don't know a lot. I mean, they got I, a good I, defense. I think they got a good defense. But my issue with the Jets and my issue with Sam Darnold, we had this conversation when we were breaking down these quarterbacks um, in the draft the year they all came out, and my problem with Sam then is the same problem I have now. Some quarterbacks are just born to throw the football to the other team. Sam's done it in college, and it's so far – it's done in the pros. Yeah. And I just think, so it's it's real easy to say, 
Well, Peyton Manning led the league in interceptions his rookie year, so it's no big deal. Yes, but he didn't have a history of doing it all through college either. Yeah. The ones that have done it their entire ultimate competitive life, even though they win a lot of games, and that's a dangerous sign. Yeah. And I just think he's he's going down that road of being a guy that's just going to give the ball to the other team. Biggest thing for the Browns, got to limit the penalties. Oh, yeah. 18 the, the penalties. The Browns have to clean their game up. The, yeah. That's, the, that's non-negotiable. For, for their offense to have success. You cannot constantly put yourself behind the sticks. Like, you just, you can't do it. And I'm curious to see if they will be able to clean it up in a week, right? They, they've got longer to prep than most teams this week. So, you know, they, they played on Sunday at noon, and now they get to play the Monday night game. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to see it. I, that's why I think this is a big game. It is interesting because this is basically the season for both of these teams. Both of these teams had playoff hopes, the the Browns obviously more than the Jets. Yeah. But the Jets thought with Adam Gase coming in, with Greg Williams coming in as defensive coordinator, that they had a real shot. And you start out 0-2, again, we know what the percentages well, I mean, are. The, this is a big game because of the anniversary. I mean, the NFL yes, is doing the, the 100 years of the NFL this year, and it's everywhere, and they're celebrating all these anniversaries. And this is the 50-year anniversary. The 50-year anniversary of Monday Night Football. This was the matchup that started it all. Yeah. And so that, I mean, so it matters just because of some pageantry and things of that nature. So that's a part of it. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Uh, you taking your Browns here? I'm taking my Browns. I think I'm probably going to go the same way. Getting I, off the I, schneid. I just don't believe that. I don't believe that the Browns would do this two weeks in a row. I, I think Baker Mayfield is better uh, than what he showed. I think this team is better. This defense, for sure. Uh, I think the Titans are a significantly better team than the Jets. Oh, and, and I don't. I don't know if there's any doubt about that. And it and it snowballed on the Browns last week. Uh, once they faced adversity, they they did not know what to do. I think they I think things will turn a little differently with the game against the Jets, even if it is on the road. Uh, there may not be as much uh, there may not be as much of a problem with them being on the road, right? At home, there's more pressure. True. So could be good to go on the road. Game number five: Chiefs minus eight at the Raiders. Two one and zero teams. I can't believe it. this is for division supremacy. Can you believe it? <laughs> Chiefs minus eight. The total is 52. It is a 3.05 p.m. game on CBS. It's at Ring Central Coliseum in Oakland, California. Raiders got that big Monday night win over the Broncos. Josh Jacobs looks like the real deal. Did you see the stats? He had over 100 scrimmage yards and two touchdowns. Only other rookie to do that in, in what, like 25 years was LaDainian Tomlinson. Pretty awesome. It's a pretty good company, if I do say so. Josh Jacobs looks like the real deal. Tyrell Williams, the wide receiver, looks like the real deal. David Carr looked really, Derek, really... Derek. Sorry. Derek Carr. <laughs> I'm thinking like late 90s here. What am I doing? Uh, 121 passer rating? That's big time stuff, right? Yeah. Was, Both yeah. of us thought that. And nope, I think I'm, the majority, yep. the majority of the world thought that the Broncos... We're just that this Raiders team was done. My my under six wins for for the Raiders does not look so good right now. No, that's gonna be. I don't know that it's gonna be tough. Maybe. I mean, we'll we'll see it's if they keep one. playing like they did. Listen, uh, you're not gonna play a lot of offenses that were that bad. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, Joe Flacco, he sucks. Yeah, he's he's about done. I mean, he sucks. I think and they a, don't have a backup situation there at all. No. Uh, no, not with, uh, and they can't even move on to the next guy yet because he's on IR, right? Yeah. So no, no, he he sucks. That offense is bad. It's it's pretty bad. Uh, Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes. He does not suck. He does not suck, but he is dealing with a little bit of injury. He's it, fine. It, I think he's going to be fine for this game. Uh, Tyree Kill, he is out. That did not seem to make a difference against the Jaguars last week. Um, I think I still like the Chiefs here, but. I have seen crazier things happen. I think the Raiders are gonna are gonna show up at home. I'm gonna take the Raiders to cover, okay. and I'm gonna take the Chiefs to win the ball game. If I had to pick, I'd take the Chiefs. Chiefs to uh, to cover, right? Yes, sir. 
Okay, I can understand that. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little different from you on That's this all right. one. Let's see, Chiefs minus eight. All right, let's talk about some interesting games to wrap this thing up. Thursday night game, Bucks at the Panthers. This is an NFC South matchup. Uh, Panthers minus seven here. You are still big on the Panthers. I am. Um, is it still is it still seven? No, it's six and a half. It's never six been and a half. Seven. Well, no, no, no. It, it jumped all the way up to seven earlier today. Oh, man, um, it did. Opened at five. I got it at six and a half. Now it's at six and a half. So it came back down a little bit. From what we saw with the Bucks, other than the Jameis throwing to the other team problem, which is a massive problem, Big and problem. like it, it will cost you games, it will cost you covers, it will cost everything else. Aside from that, if he's not throwing the ball to the other team, which there have been games where he hasn't, they are few and far between, but it has happened. Can the Bucks compete with the Panthers? The problem is, is the Bucks weren't looking good before he turned the ball over. See, that's like the they issue. weren't scoring a lot anyway. That's what I was trying to figure out. Like what is what was amazing was their defense was was doing was giving the 49ers fits. And that's the problem is that's where I struggle with I don't know what to think of the 49ers. Kyle Shanahan, what are you doing? Your offense looks terrible against what has kind of been a not great defense. Now maybe they're much improved. Maybe they are a much Better defense, the 49ers. And that's why James and them looked as bad as they did. But even before the interceptions, they weren't putting up a ton of points. No, they really weren't. They really weren't. Um, and Todd Bowles, I mean, he's still a really good defensive coordinator. No, this is so, not a coaching problem. This is a talent problem. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Um, we're not making picks on these games, but I, mean, I kind of like the Panthers minus six yeah. and a half here. Yeah, this game's in my gambling picks. Sunday Night Football, this game is in my gambling picks. The Eagles minus one and a half at the Falcons. Um, Look, Falcons looked terrible, awful. And the Eagles did not impress as much against the Redskins. I mean, they just, they got walloped in that first half. And then came out and scored, what, 25 in the third? 25 unanswered. Yeah, just didn't didn't necessarily put the game away, but got it to where they actually got the win. down 17. Yeah. Um, to catch up before you put the game on. So the, the Eagles were not impressive. The Falcons were not impressive. But this is a, a big-time spot for both teams. Eagles, first road game. You're coming out. Uh, I like whatever the over is on this uh, because I think both teams will be able to score here. Because if the Redskins can score on the Eagles, I 100% believe the Falcons will be able to. I got 51. Uh, 51. And the entire world is on the over. Yeah, it seems like everybody would be on the over. Yeah, that, that kind of makes sense. Um, but since I'm not putting money on the total... That's right. I'll still roll with the over on that. Um, look, Carson Wentz, it took him a little bit, but he got back rolling. He looked Agreed. good. Um, the Falcons, however, I just... And now, it could be because the Vikings' defense is that good. And I, I think that's probably what it is. Man, they got way too many weapons to be held scoreless for three quarters. But, I mean, I thought this Eagles defense was supposed to be that level good, too. So, I like them a lot. You know how much I feel, uh, how I feel about Fletcher Cox. Um, I like this Eagles team. I, I was shocked, and I didn't understand how we got the game we got against Washington. Uh, maybe, maybe I'm just disrespecting Washington far too much, and, and that's, that's wrong of me. But I like this Eagles team. I think they're going to be in the conversation for competing for the Super Bowl in the NFC all year long. And to do that, you got to be able to win on the road just like you can win at home. Got that right. And if you're the Falcons, if you're talking about playoffs, you're already 0-1. No, you can't go you, 0-2. You can't go 0-2. you got to get a win at home. Uh, you got to protect that home turf. Next game up, Bears minus 2 at the Broncos. Both 0-1. Both had playoff hopes this year. Vic Fangio versus his old team. Two offenses that cannot do anything. Anything. Oh, no. And you got two pretty good defenses. And now and the I Broncos thought, didn't look. I thought the Broncos defense was supposed to be really good. I think the Broncos defense will look better against the Bears. If only because. Because the Raiders are just juggernauts. Well, I'm, the only reason I say this is the Raiders at least have some weapons. The Bears, even if they have weapons, I don't know that Trubisky can get it to them. Right? Like that's. I don't know, man. 
Like it, both of these teams really disappointed. I was me so disappointed one. in the Broncos defense. Like I expected Flacco to be Flacco. I was yeah. I was disappointed in the bet one because I lost money on him, but no, two yeah, that sucked, because but. man Trubisky looks like he took two steps backwards from last season. Yeah, but I have no expectations of either of these offenses. One of these teams showed me they still have fight and they still can play defense. The yep. other one played a lesser team than what I think the Bears played offensively, and they showed no fight. I mean, if you had to roll with one, you'd, you'd have to go Bears here, right? I would take the Bears. E- even though Vic knows this team inside and out, I still I, don't think it matters. I stand, I stand by my previous statement. All right, next game, we only got two more. Colts at the Titans. Titans are minus three. This is a division game. This is this is big. If the Titans want to make some noise, they need to win this game at home. Colts looked pretty good at the Chargers last week. Jacoby Brissett, super improved. That offensive line is nasty. Man, that Colts offensive line is... It, I'm not going to call them dirty. I'm just going to call them nasty. Because they are ruthless. We, I shared I shared out to, to Gary a, a video that I found of some some pretty nasty plays online today of just guys getting thrown like rag dolls. Yes, it, it's it, oh. and now I do think that the Titans can match up with them. I do like the Titans on the line of scrimmage on offense and defense. Yeah, I agree um, with that. No, uh, yeah, I, I, but again, man. Yeah, the, the Titans O line and D line. Substantially better than well, maybe not D line. Yeah, I don't know, man. Right. I, I think so. I think that D line is is pretty good. But I, here's Bosa and Ingram are on that line. This is a the world really bad. well. It, it so especially with uh, Taylor Lewan still being out, right? Like that's that's still a problem. But the offensive line did look good against you know Miles Garrett. And oh, the line. offensive line is way better than the Chargers' offensive line. Yeah, I agree with that. All right, go. On. Um, we're circling the wagons here. Yeah, Colts Colts at the Titans is a it's still a massive game. I think this is maybe the most evenly matched game of this week. I think. I don't know that I'll disagree with that. I like that. So I think I think these two teams are very very similar. Uh, last game up, Jaguars at the Texans. Gardner Minshew. This is all about the mustache here. Look, Nick Foles is out. The Texans obviously got the loss. It, in excruciating fashion on Monday night in New Orleans. The Jags, look, everybody kind of expected them to lose to the Chiefs anyway, especially when Nick Foles went out. Gardner Minshew was, what, 22 out of 25? I want to know where Jalen Ramsey is at. at Jalen Ramsey. Talking all that yang, and I don't know if he was not the one covering Watkins. Sammy Watkins. But my question is, if you're not, who the hell are you covering? Because you weren't covering Hill. He was out of the game. Yeah. So you're going to cover the third best guy? I mean, it, you got me. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. Run all that yak. And and do nothing. Uh I think I think the Jags defense obviously did not look good nope. week one. But I I think they can hang with the Texans here. I think this is another I think fairly even matchup. What's well, a divisional game? Divisional game. And this the AFC South is super close. Yes. I don't I this is not the 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 AFC East yep. where you've just got a juggernaut, and then three teams that are all about the same, you know, kind of fighting for, for, for second place. This is everybody's on equal footing. Yeah. Yeah, you're right about that. All right, that is going to wrap up our NFL big game previews for week number two. Make sure you go check out the NFL Gambling Picks podcast slash uh, YouTube video, whatever. Go over to winningcureseverything.com. Go check out tunicatravel.com. That is where you want to go put in your picks. You want to go down for a nice visit, spend a good weekend down at the sportsbook, etc. They got awesome golf courses. They got all kind of stuff down there. So go check it out, tunicatravel.com, winningcureseverything.com. We will see you guys again next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.